I have on the phone author, mindset coach, and real estate magnate, Suniva Holt, joining us all the way from Auckland, New Zealand. Welcome, and why don't you tell the audience about yourself? I can see from your book and your postings on social media, especially on Facebook, that you're also an advocate of the raw diet. Yeah, look, I'm not uh, raw as something that I did when I was pregnant because I, because I had a really bad pregnancy. So eating a raw vegan diet was what healed me at the time. It's not what I follow now, but it's something I definitely advocate because I've seen um, how much it can change a person's life with different health issues. So. Yeah, it's, it uh, definitely turned my health around at the time. Oh, wow. So it was raw and vegan, huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was more based on alkalinity at the time. It wasn't, wasn't about veganism. It was just um, more about balancing your health and eating Okay, now I'd like to get into your book, The Hustle Life, because the title immediately jumped out to me and I thought, wow, this author must be from Brooklyn, because the title sounds like the thoughts of someone who is from Brooklyn, that idea of hustling. So uh, could you tell me, just from reading your book and your website, you seem like someone who is very straightforward, sort of in your face. Is that common to New Zealanders? Mm -hmm. I think New Zealanders have that English tendency to be, you know, we're not we're not as straight to the point um, as in general. I think if I was to generalise, that's that's not a New Zealand attribute. We're ah. pretty chilled, laid back. Um, I'm I'm definitely not. I guess not the norm. I see. I see. And um, was it, has that always been your lifestyle, just to kind of be the tell it like it is, straightforward person? Yeah, absolutely. I think I was born this way, and I think it's just been something I've been more comfortable with in the last year or two, just to be uh, really upfront and um, say the things that sometimes other people would be a little, a little bit scared to say, which is what what I get, um, I, you know, I get a lot of emails and stuff from people saying, oh, you know, thank you for saying that because I never would have had the courage to say that myself. So um, I just believe it's really important for us to be super authentic and um, be really straight up about things because it's the only way that things will change. So could you explain a term I found in your book, uh, the term elevating environment? have a lot of passion and have a lot of 
have a lot of goals, but if you're surrounding yourself with people that are dragging you down, then you're never really going to get ahead or you're going, you know, you'll keep trying, but it'll be a real struggle the whole time. So uh, environment is key and that's like, like I said, friends are really important, uh, family members, just being really careful to guard your energy and also in the workplace um, to make sure that you're, you're just being surrounded by a really um, positive, inspiring energy. Another cool fact I found in your book, and it's the very first line of your book, um, so I'd like to have you explain it, um, is, is the line you have, you get to choose your life. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, why don't you explain that, um, explain to the audience how you discover that and how you help other people discover that fact. Yeah, I think people um, don't really get that a lot of the time. I think they just think that what they've got is what they've got and they have to settle, um, which is bullshit, obviously. Mm -hmm. like, we, we have choices every step of the way, like everything that we have right now um, and what, we, what we're doing and what we're, where we are is, is because we've made those choices. So it's like, it's just realizing that we do have power over everything that we, we do and that everything is a choice. And as Tony Robbins well, puts it so well, is we get what we tolerate. Mm, wow. <laughs> That's a powerful thought. That's true. So I learned from your book that you were successful early in life and, and you weren't really happy you discovered you weren't happy and you were really successful so when and, and what did you discover that you had to change yeah I realized I mean I what happened was I was really successful in the typical sense I had all the money and I had a great family and I lived in like my dream location and my dream house and got to travel a lot and um, I was basing success on the wrong things or not necessarily the wrong things it's, you know it's great to want to succeed in those areas as well like there's nothing wrong with materialism uh, but I hadn't put focus on to the learning and the growing because if we're not growing we're dying and I was I guess I was stagnant where I was because I hadn't figured out the next step and I wasn't doing anything to really contribute to others and uh, it just left me feeling pretty empty at the time so I had to start really doing uh, spending a lot of time and money on personal growth I think in the last year I spent over $70,000 on um, personal development and growth and coaching um, just to just to figure out really what I wanted and to keep um, just keep learning because we sh you know that's something we should never stop doing it doesn't matter how old we get right right and there's always so much to learn and the more we learn the more we realize how much we still don't know mm, yeah exactly and it's I mean the other thing was it's like it's that coaching is so important um, no matter what level we're at or if, even if we're coaching other people, we should always have somebody coaching us to, to be that person, push us forward and to make sure that we're continually growing. Right, so it seems like coaching is a cycle. Once you receive coaching and then begin coaching, you still continue to receive coaching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's vital if we, if we really want to um, be successful and to be doing amazing things then that's just key great um so i have a, another question what is morning mastery uh, the morning mastery is, is another thing that i um, believe really strongly in it's it's um making sure that you set up your day for success and so for me what that looks like is getting up really early um I, you know i quite like early in the morning before everybody else is up and about and you get that time to yourself. Um, it's making sure that you start your day how you intend it to continue because so often like people will just roll out of bed, grab a coffee and go to work or whatever it is that they do and they're not, they're not um, setting a time, aside that time for themselves to make sure that they're living their day with intention. Um, so. I find it really important to spend that first 
hour or so of the day doing things that uh, are going to drive me forward. So that's things like journaling, meditating, uh, setting intentions for the day, the, the mindset work, and well, you know, exercise and things like that are, of course, are a part of it as well. So um, it's just, yeah, like I said, it's something that I've been doing daily for quite a long time. I mean, I used to do it when I was younger as well, and it's a really great way to encourage your creativity um, as well as just kind of figure out exactly what you do want and where you're going in your life because um, I think we just we have a lot going up on our, on our heads um, that just go around in circles we just think ourselves around in circles but if we get it out on paper um, then we get a lot more clarity on what it is that we actually want to be or want to do or where we where we're going true true that's true by writing it down the events that we have to accomplish throughout the day don't seem so daunting or overwhelming. We have sort of a, a visual map on what we have to accomplish. Yeah, that's right. You can kind of figure a lot out um, and just get that creative flow happening as well. Right. Now, I, I see from your book, you sort of describe yourself as an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. <laughs> so, what sort of things uh, have you have you done? Uh, sort out like the kind of risky mm -hmm. endeavors, activities. Yeah, sure. Um, I've done a lot of bungee jumping. I've done, well, I mean, I've done about seven or eight bungee jumps, various ones. And uh, I've done skydiving and whitewater rafting and jet boating and canyon swinging. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you always sought out those kind of risky thrill seeker? activities yeah yeah i really have from from the time i was able to walk i think my parents would would vouch for the fact that i've always been in, into the big roller coasters and whatever where i could, where I could <laughs> to get that rush <laughs> okay so there's another quote from your book that i'd like you to elaborate on a bit it's uh, the quote is Everything in your environment is a result of what you're doing or what you're not doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, it comes back to the power of, uh, of choices, that the choices that we have made or that we haven't made. And it's taking responsibility for what we have in our life because we have put it there in some way or another. And it's like, even if it's by the result of not doing something, well, that's also like a choice that we have made in some way so it's taking responsibility for that and realizing that um that we can we can't change anything that we want to and we really shouldn't be complaining about anything because um you know spend that energy on on making the change instead of um moaning about what you what you do or do not have true true that's very true now there's so much of your book that appealed to me but this there's one part in particular that seemed to target me specifically, and it's where you, you write about being an instant yes girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how, did you, how did you come to realize that that was a powerful way to order your life and motivate yourself? Yeah, it's such a common thing, especially for women. I think we tend to say yes to everything, and for men as well, obviously. Um, that I guess we don't want to offend people or we don't want to miss out. It's like that FOMO thing. Right. Um, but we, then we run ourselves ragged and spend, uh, expend energy on things that aren't actually that important and aren't driving us towards our goals. So it's really important to to, um, to say no to most things and but then make your yeses count. And I think it's just so important that when we do say yes that we are impeccable with our word, that we have integrity with that yes and that the... Um, but that we are just making sure that we only say uh, yes a fraction of the time that we do. Hey, that's that's so important. That's one of the things that I really struggle with. Um, my last name is Nolan, and people would call me Roy. Can't say no, Len, <laughs> because I would say yes to everything. Cause you did, yeah, and then I'd like you said, I'd find myself running myself ragged trying to do everyone's chores and help everyone and not leaving yeah. enough time to do anything well. So are you working on another book now? Yeah, it will be soon. Um, it's, in, it's definitely in the works, I think, for uh, early to mid next year, it'll be out. Ah, ah. 
And um, have you, because you, you, you're a mother of a, of a young daughter, um, how has your life changed since your, your daughter came into your life? Oh, God, it's changed like 100%. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, one amazing thing with having a child is it just teaches you, you that there's so much more, um, more important things than what's just going on with us. I think, you know, human beings are naturally quite selfish creatures. And we're very consumed. We're very self-consumed, and having a child just really um, gets you out out of your own head, and uh, you have just your focus is more external, mm -hmm. uh, which which is amazing. It, um, it just I don't really even know where to where to start. I think everybody that has a child completely understands. This. Right, <laughs> so right. You have one, you don't, because like you know, I didn't even want children for most of my life, and. But then having one has just been the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. So, yeah. It's... That's fantastic. I can tell you're very happy. So, um, I know you have your book, which is The Hustle Life, available on Amazon.com. And you have a page on Facebook. Are there any other social media avenues that people can reach out to you to contact you about coaching or the other work that you do? Yeah, sure. I'm pretty much on every platform, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, under my full name, Suniva Holt. Good luck finding that, but uh, <laughs> you can spell it. It's, um, but yeah, you'll find me on pretty much every platform. So. Okay, great. Um, and, and you're also a mindset coach. Yeah, that's right. I, I trained um, in mindset coaching a few months ago which is amazing it's um, something that's so important to me and it's something that is I guess it's the thing that made the biggest difference in my life so it was really important that I was able to to pass that knowledge on to other people yeah because sometimes be, helping people motivates you to also look at and improve the things in your own life mm -hmm. yeah that's right yeah you, you learn as, at the same time as you're teaching yeah so you're in you're in New Zealand. It's already Wednesday there, and I, I always wanted to ask this, and I know it's going to be silly. Can you tell me the lotto numbers for today? <laughs> that's actually quite funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, since I was like four years old, I was like, wait, what if it's already tomorrow? They already know stuff. Like who won the Mets game? You know. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Keeping the Hill on the Horizon. So uh, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to tell people about your book, The Hustle Life, available on Amazon.com, or mindset coaching, or just improving their lives in general, or how they can be more motivated? I'll just leave you with, um, with this. There's no, there's no growth in a comfort zone, so if you're not doing something that makes you uncomfortable, then it's probably time that you look to to do something that, um, that scares the hell out of you. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's powerful and very true. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Holt. Um, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I, I appreciate it greatly. Uh, I, I know that um, people that were tuning in were so eager to hear you and, and learn more about your book. And I thank you so much for coming on. Uh, pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Take care. That was Suniva Holt, author of the book The Hustle Life, available on Amazon.com, joining us from Auckland, New Zealand. And we'll be right back with our Victory of the Day segment.